What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. I recently picked up a new addition to my Hoth Rebel Commander collection. And it's a modest collection that I have right now. You're looking at it right now. <laughs> it's not like I have a whole bunch of them or anything like that. But I wanted to show you, uh, especially because I've got uh, you know some new subscribers that maybe haven't seen some of these before. Uh, because I haven't shown them on the channel in a long time. I mean, over a couple years. But I want to show you these. And then I picked up a new loose graded one that's actually a really nice, probably of all of them, it's probably the most rare um, and easily I've spent the most on. So, uh, But this is one that uh, I, I have not shown on the channel in a long time. This is a Palatoy Tri-Logo Rebel Commander. And a, a very, very nice example. I, this is, I, I probably picked this up five plus years ago. I, I don't know exactly when, but it, it was a long time ago. I paid less than $200 for this. So you can you can imagine how much the price has gone up on this one. But this is the 70 back C Rebel Commander and it's graded overall 85. The card 80, blister 85, figure 85. I, th I think I paid $185 shipped for this one. So uh, the market has certainly advanced <laughs> since that price. But uh, it's it's about as nice as you're gonna find for for one of these tri logos. It's just a very very clean example. This one has the etched ex, uh, the etched bubble uh, etched blister. Uh, you can see you know there's got some lines there and you know some of the fact some of the the blisters for these Palatoy tri logos have that etching on the on the edges and some of them don't. But this one has the etched etched bubble type. So, uh, but a really, really nice one. And, you know, this, this figure, and we'll come back to this, to this topic, but this, this figure, you know, apparently was made in Hong Kong and you can see, um, the figure there. So I, I don't even know if there's a no COO version of, uh, of the Hoth Rebel Commander other than the one I'm going to show you. And, uh, that's the, that's the one I just picked up. This is kind of a wonky one, but, uh, this one at first glance is like, what on earth is this crazy thing? But this is a, uh, a, a loose displayed, uh, cap, cap two. This is like the, the mini rig that, you know, one of the, one of the eight or so mini rigs that Kenner released as kind of a budget item for, for, you know, kids back then, back then, you know, kids who maybe could not afford like the X wings or the slave ones, or, you know, all these really expensive play sets. They, they released kind of these mini rigs as an, as a budget friendly alternative for parents to be able to pick up non, you know, these were not in the movies, but you know, in, in theory, they're kind of like right off screen type thing. That's kind of how they were marketed. And one of those was the cap two. And it's kind of a weird vehicle that had like suction cup legs and, you know, a little claw that came out. And one of the, uh, uh, on the box art for it, it shows, um, uh, it shows boss driving one of these cap twos with the Hoth rebel, uh, commander inside the claws of, of this this weird weird contraption. So uh, somebody it very innovatively decided to loose display this. You know, it's kind of an unused cap two, unused sticker sheet. It's got the uh, you know the instruction booklet. It's got the baggie with the legs and the arms and things, and and it has the unused kind of cap two along with two figures. And so it's got a Hong Kong rebel commander. And a Hong Kong boss, both graded 85. Now, I talked about this before, but if you look at the figure uh, for the, the the grading for the Rebel Commander, it's labeled as a 90 for figure, paint 85 for an overall 85. Now, this one suffers from a paint overspray on the leg, and again, we're going to come back to that topic. But that, this, you know, when I bought this originally, I was like, there's no way this is an 85%. In my opinion, if it's got, I don't care if it's a factory overspray or not. You know, it's cer it certainly happened in the factory where the paint kind of bled through. And I think the reason why it does this, and I, you see this on a, on a lot of different Rebel, uh, Rebel, Hoth Rebel Commanders, is because of this, you know, quilted style, you know, molding to the legs that I think when the paint gets sprayed, and if the you know the figure gets uh, you know moved upside down while the while the boots are still drying, that paint will just drip right through because these you know these quilting the quilted molding acts as a natural funnel or channel for that wet paint to travel. And you can see that's what it, exactly what it did right there. So when I got this, I was like, "There's no way that's an 85 percent." In my opinion, this sh this should be an 80 percent figure because of the paint overspray or, or factory air where, you know, the, the workers did not let the figure dry 
it probably got tilted upside down and all that wet paint in on the boots dripped all the way down you know using those kind of uh those the quilting kind of molding as a rivulet so to speak and all that all that paint just dripped right down so you do see that quite a bit on on, on hoth rebel uh, commanders that it's just you know for whatever reason that the factory workers were impatient and they didn't let the figures dry first before they started moving them or started putting them in the in the bubble in the blister so that's the other one I've got in my collection. Now, here's the other one. This is one I bought ungraded for like 15 bucks. It was such a good deal. And it came with the weapon. It was in really good shape. It graded, and I sent it to, uh, to Collector Archive Services about two years ago. And it, it, this is the Hong Kong. And this is labeled as a Tunic Sculpt 1. Uh, so it's a Hong Kong. And it graded 85. And when, it's, when it says Tunic Sculpt 1, it's referring to... Uh, the portions down here, you know, there's lots of, I'm sure I'm missing something, but if you look at this sculpt, especially around here, around his waistline, going down to his crotch versus this one. So this is two different sculpts to, uh, to the tunic. So you can see how the one inside this blister has three very distinct lines versus this one has a one distinct line and then two kind of creases that, that kind of end before it gets all the way down. So... That's Tunic Sculpt 1 Hong Kong. This is most likely the Tunic Sculpt 2 Hong Kong, since it does say Made in Hong Kong on, on, the, um, on the blister. It's not always a definite, but, you know, it's, it's most likely a Hong Kong Tunic Sculpt 2 versus the Sculpt 1. So, now it's time for the new one. And, uh, you know, this is one I picked up on eBay from Muffin Man. We've talked about Muffin Man many times on... Uh, the market updates, but this is a very, very unique one. This is a Spanish-made Puck Hoth Rebel Commander with the black boots, what's called the black boots. And you can see how dark those boots are versus the Hong Kong example. It's more of a brown boot, reddish-brown boot. But these, this is, you know, one of the more distinctive early Spanish figures in, in the Star Wars line. And, you know, the early Spanish figures were made by a factory called Poc, P-O-C-H. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. If I'm not, I apologize, but that's the way it is. Uh, that factory imported Hong Kong parts, but they assembled the figures and painted the figures in Spain, in the Poc factory. And so you can see that this is very, very distinctly, uh, most likely a, uh, a Tunic Sculpt 1 Hong Kong figure because, you know, the, the early Spanish figures all have Hong Kong date stamps on it since they imported the parts. But because they painted them in the Spanish factory, you often got these weird and wacky colors like the Toxic Limbs Green Bosks that I showed you a month or so ago. Uh, or the Red Armor, uh, uh, the Red Armor Forlom, or the Chocolate Boots Hoth. Han Solo, you know, there's all kinds of different, really interesting color variations. Well, this happens to be one of them. And you can see that this figure suffers from the exact same issue as the one in my uh, Cap 2 kind of custom custom display piece. So, uh, very similar situation where likely the, these boots were painted and the figure was probably turned upside down. And all that paint started going right through that channel, uh, through the, you know, the figure molding. So... Uh, now let's let's take a look at how they label it. Um, Star Wars Rebel Commander Pock black boots with overpaint boots. So at least they do mention the overpaint, and it could be an overpaint. You know, guys, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say it's definite that that that's what happened that the, the paint dripped down, but it just seems like the, the way that that paint is presented there, it most likely was hung upside down or you know was being shifted around before the boots dried, and that's what caused that paint to dry. They're calling it an overpaint. And I guess technically they were overpainted, right? You know, there was too much paint applied and it just dripped down, uh, is my guess. But but at least they do label it on there. Now, in my opinion, though, to, to give this an 85 score for the paint is incorrect. This should be an 80 score at best. And I'm okay with a figure 95. I'm even okay with the overall 85. But I think that that paint score should be an 80, uh, an 80 score. But anyway, it is labeled as a, as a POC, which is correct. And made in Hong Kong, which is correct for the early Spanish figures. Now, the later Spanish figures, after the Pac factory merged with another factory called PBP, those figures, uh, you know, they produced their own uh, actual parts. Instead of uh, importing from Hong Kong, they used the Hong Kong molds, but scarred out the Hong Kong portion on the actual figure mold, the, the mold used to make the plastic pieces. 
So that's why most of the Spanish PBP figures post-merger with Pac have a SCAR COO. You'll see that on many labels, and I've got many examples in my collection that you can go back and look at. So this is the new one. Uh, this is my first UKG case with kind of the updated laser etched casing, and I really like it. I think it's a very, very nice case overall. Uh, it presents really well. And I thought it would be fun at, you know, at the behest of Blacked Out Ewoks, who's a good buddy of mine and a fellow YouTuber. He said, why don't you pull out, when you show your, your Spanish Pac Rebel Commander, why don't you pull out the book? And we can kind of read some of the dialogue from Javier Ruiz Lopez's Made in Spain Comprehensive Catalog PBP slash Pac book. So this is a book that I've referenced many times on the channel. Written by Javier Ruy Lopez. He's getting ready to come out with the edi uh, another edition that kind of updates the information. But I thought it'd be interesting. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but here is the page on the Rebel Commander. So this is a Made in Hong Kong Dark Boots, is what they call it. I mean, I call it Black Boots. That's what that's how it's labeled. But you can label it however you want to. But it, it, the, the guide does a great job of showing the Spanish Pac versus the more traditional Hong Kong figure, and it gives you close-ups of you know, the face, the legs, the date stamp, all of that information. And um, and I thought it would be kind of just interesting point is to kind of take it point by point. Um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, and then maybe take a look at the, the figure itself. So uh, anyway, uh, you know, the, the the COO is, again, a made in Hong Kong, which we've already talked about. That's, that's nothing new since it does use Hong Kong parts. And um, let's see what, see what else it says. The plastic. Uh, the head slash cap is very similar. However, the cap is slightly yellowish white plastic on the Spanish figure compared to a purer white used on the Kenner counterpart. The Kenner counterpart being uh, the, the Hong Kong bait figure. So uh, they're saying that, you know, this is a, a more of a pure white color versus the Spanish figure. And... You know, looking at it closely, I don't see that much of a difference on it. You know, again, it's it's Hong Kong parts. So, you know, a lot of it could be just degradation. It could be, you know, things like that. But I, I don't see a massive difference. Where I do see the difference is in the goggles. You can see how dark the Hong Kong goggles are versus these goggles here, which are a little bit more reddish in tone. And he does mention that in the book. Uh, in the book, it says, bear with me here. Let me find that information. Uh, the, both the glasses and the scarf are a translucent raw umber, a dark brown kind of color in the Spanish variant, while an opaque burnt umber, a reddish dark brown kind of color, is used on the Kinner figure. Sloppy paint is, is a common feature, both on the glasses and the scarf of the Spanish figure. Now, sloppy paint is not just a Hoth Rebel Commander Pac issue. That sloppy paint is for all Spanish figures, whether it's PvP or the early Pac figures like this. And, you know, that's why you see this kind of sloppy paint here. But, you know, th this 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 issue, I think, is not uh, a sloppy paint. It, that's a wet paint and moving it before it's dry issue. But a number of Spanish figures are always going to have weak welding uh, for the joints that, that hold the, the torso pieces together. And they're just known for really, really sloppy paint applications. And we're going to get into that when we start looking at the chest piece here in a second. But you can, again, just referencing what Javier Ruiz Lopez said, you can see how... Uh, much lighter the goggles are versus the Hong Kong figure. It's a, it's a it's a pretty significant difference. And even the scarf, you know, the scarf is more of a reddish, uh, a reddish kind of brown versus this scarf, which is much darker. So while the boots are lighter uh, than the Sp Spanish figure, the, the scarf and the goggles are much lighter on the Spanish figure than on the Hong Kong figure. So that's interesting. Um Let's see, what else do we got here? I don't see much in the way of differences for for the face. Um, a pale yellow color is used on the Spanish variant, while an orange yellow is used on the Kenner variant. And you can, it's a very, very subtle difference. It may not even, it may not even pick up uh, in, in this camera, but you know, looking at them in person, you can definitely see a slight difference in the color of the faces. Let's see if we can get them to focus here. It's very, very subtle. You, it's very subtle, and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't look to me like it's showing up very well on uh, on camera, but I can tell you that in person, it, there is a very slight difference in, in the paint color for the face uh, for the Red Bull Commander. Uh, what else? The chest details slash emblems are very similar, 
practically identical at sight in hue and color. Uh, sloppy paint is a common feature on the chest details of the Spanish variant. And that's 100% true with mine. So if you look at the Hong Kong figure, you can see how sharp and crisp the paint the paintwork is on on this on this figure that in general it's, it's pretty clean but if you look at the spanish figure it's it's kind of a sloppy mess you know there's a lot of overspray around the chest piece here and then even on uh these two pieces down here his kind of emblems or whatever there's just a lot of paint overspray it's not terrible i've, I've certainly seen way worse on these spanish figures i've seen like just crazy uh, overspray but this is a very minor overspray really uh but it, it definitely is not nearly as clean as the Hong Kong. And I think it's just a, a function of the factory, you know, the, the assembly and painting machinery used by the early Spanish factory, just not nearly as advanced as the Hong Kong factory was. But uh, it's quite a bit of, of shadowing and overspray on the chest piece there. Um, and I don't know if there's really much else I wanted to point out, but uh, again, the boots are a trans translucent eggplant brown, a reddish and very dark brown kind of color on the Spanish figure, while a light orange brown is used on the Kenner figure. There is another Spanish boot variant, which is painted with a raw umber, a greenish dark brown kind of color to the left in the image. So let's take a look at that here. Image number eight. So if you look right here, this is, uh, Javier is saying that this is another variation well, that's six. We're seven. Oh, here it is. Eight. Okay, so this is the one that I have, but this is um, another color that uh, that is also noted on the Spanish Pock figure, so it's a little bit more reddish in tone than this one. I think that's what he says, right? Which is painted a raw umber, greenish, dark brown kind of color to the left. Okay, so anyway, th these two colors, uh, while pretty much similar, there is a slight, you know, a slight difference in shade is what he's saying. And both of these were options on the early Spanish figure. So and this is just one of the best resources out there, this Spanish guy. I highly recommend you pick up uh, the, the new volume that's coming out. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it, at least right now, just because I've got so many books already that I haven't even... Uh, I haven't even had a chance to read yet, but maybe I'll get the, the third edition at some point, but... Uh, but anyway, it's just it's just it's nice to to have this guide though, when you're looking at these Spanish figures online, and and to make sure that what you're buying is what you're actually getting. And this is 100% a, a, a Spanish Puck Hoth Rebel Commander, and it's you know this is one of the easier ones to verify because of the of the boot color. But uh, some of the other ones are are, are very subtle. The, the the differences are very subtle, like my uh, my my Spanish Luke. X-Wing uh, Pock figure, and I also got a Pock Pale Hands and Pale Chests Han Solo. Both of those were graded very harshly, in my opinion, relative to um, to what they were. And I probably should have bu busted those out for this video, but I didn't. But anyway, it's nice to add another Spanish Pock figure. I don't have many Spanish early Spanish figures, but this is one of the uh, you know the more desirable ones in the line. Uh, the, the, you know, there's the Spanish Rebel Soldier with the dark brown vest. That's another one that's pretty popular. And obviously, the 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 Toxic Limbs Bosque is is the Holy Grail that I you know I just showed in a recent video. So anyway, it's just another variation uh, for for my Hoth Rebel Commander collection as small as it is it's kind of cool to, to add another one here and uh, i hope you find this this information useful some of you might have found it boring but i thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of compare the figure versus a hong kong using the guide that javier Rui lopez uh, put together that's that's you know really a, a, the best for verifying spanish-made figures thanks so much for watching and i'll be back soon mm -hmm.